Welcome friends to Sandy Spring Friends Meeting Advent Meditation for 2021. This year, we've chosen to read All Creation Waits, The Advent Mystery of New Beginnings by Gail Boss, illustrated by David G. Klein and published by Paraclete Press. A new meditation will be posted to our YouTube channel each day from December 1st through the 25th. We invite you to listen to the daily meditation and take a few moments to reflect on its meaning for your life. Advent 22, Red Fox. The longest night of the year retreats reluctantly. Slow to wake, morning seeps in, gray and grainy. Startling then, the quick orange brush stroked against the snow at the field's edge, her signature curving into the thicket and gone. Finally, the fox will rest. It's likely she's been out since the sun set yesterday, 15 dark hours ago, hours keenly focused on quieting her hunger. The berries and autumn fruits she loves are gone. The beetles, other insects, and lizards perished or burrowed underground. Most birds far flown. And few creatures have died from exposure this early into winter, or she would feed her urgent body with their fallen ones. I turn my route toward her vanishing point. Intersecting her tracks, I follow and see them change. They fall closer together and pivot a quarter turn, then stop. For six feet or so, the snow lies quiet, unbroken. Then a churned commotion of a hole and two drops of blood. Minutes ago, the fox was trotting westward across the field when tiny rustling, shuffling, squeaking sounds rippled through the snow from as far away as a football field and into the soft receptacles of her ears. She stopped. She cocked her head from side to side, right ear high, left ear high, measuring the split second lag between the rustle squeak reaching one ear than the other. Thus she estimated where under the white expanse its source stirred. But to stay alive, she needs precision. Once she'd taken the sound's measure, she crept ahead, ears alert, furred pillows of her paws falling with less than a whisper on the snow. Then, still listening, she turned, aimed her body of attention just east of true north. She saw north. It seems Earth's magnetic field creates a patch of shadow on her eye's retina to show her north. When she turned north, the shadow she saw went ahead of her, step by deliberate step. Homing in, she lined up the shadow, always the same, precise distance from her, with the shifting under snow sound. For a breath, she crouched. Then she reared onto her hind legs, knees bent, launching up and out on a trajectory into which she had factored speed and direction of the invisible scurrying depth and resistance of the snow cover. In midair, she made minute corrections with the rudder of her tail. At the peak of a precisely ordered arc, she plunged. For a silent instant, she seemed headless in the snow. Then she wriggled up out of the crater she'd made, righted, she lifted her muzzle skyward and gulped. Though she listens intently to detect the distant wisp of sound, though she trains on it the whole of her attention, allowing no distractions as she moves in with steps polished into silence, in winter these remarkable powers are insufficient. To complete them, to find the hidden nourishment, she must turn in the direction of the shadow. If she leaps without its reliable lead, she will come up empty four out of five times. Following it, she is fed. For more information about Sandy Spring Friends Meeting, Paraclete Press, or Quakers in general, please see the lists in the description below. Thank you for joining us for our meditation and please join us tomorrow.